What up? This is Robert Ory. Ory, three pointer. Where is it? You might know me as Big Shot Bob. To Ory for three. Oh, unbelievable. Oh, this guy is off the charts. What's going on, Big Shot Bob? Robert Ory from downtown. What is going on, Big Shot Bob? Another day and a life. Another day in the life. <laughs> uh, we've done this 156 times. That's uh, B Dog Brandon Harper. I'm Rob Jenners. That's seven time NBA champion and avid non coffee guy. <laughs> Robert Ory. We just learned uh, that before the show. You're not a coffee dude, huh? No, I'm not a coffee man. I don't even like the smell of coffee. I, I had this one teacher back in the day. She was uh, my third grade teacher. Of course, I'm just as tall as she is. And she, her breath would smell like coffee. And I used to get in trouble in her class because it was my math class. And I'll be done with my shit before, like, everybody. I'm sitting there causing trouble. And she'll be talking to them like, like trying to move my face around. She's like, what's wrong? I was like, your breath smell like coffee. Oh. Like, <laughs> I hate so you have a coffee. traumatic coffee memory. That's that's yes. that's the problem. All right. Yeah, it was not traumatic. It's just, you know, when you talk, you're a tall kid and, and the teacher's like right here in your yeah, face. Yeah, you're face like, to face. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. I, I just finished a I just finished a coffee. coffee. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, see, I did morning radio for eight years. So uh-huh. like when you're waking up at three o'clock in the morning to get in and, and talk on the radio for like four hours, forget it. If you don't have coffee, your mind isn't even awake. It's just it's, it's, it's so many guys that drink coffee before games for that for that caffeine and stuff, but I just I just had I, I'd to... imagine they'd be tough before a game though. Yeah. Here's the just... problem with taking that before a game. What people don't understand is coffee. Coffee is also an unofficial laxative. Oh no, it's quite so official. You... No, it's quite official. <laughs> yeah. So how in the world do you drink coffee before a game and then not have to? Hey man, let well, me. Hey, I got to. Dude. Hey man, it's, uh, almost every player I know they take they take one before the game, make themselves light on their feet. <laughs> okay, I get. Oh, that. you're gonna be so, light on your feet, all right? Yeah, or, or you're gonna be Paul Pearson. It back to the <laughs> wheelchair. Me back to the back to the locker room because uh, that coffee gonna kick in, knock, yeah. knock you down. Um, what are you doing, man? What's going on? How are you? We're a little bit late this week. We we've had yeah. some uh, Rob had some stuff going on yesterday, so we kicked yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. You know, help a Honda. Um, you know, Honda. We is you know is it was kind of yesterday was a rough day on me. Um, just because it was it was. The help of Honda and Spectrum, we did um, at this school, I mean, Mendoza School, Mendez, Mendez School, not Mendoza, Mendez School. Okay. And it was to help kids with special needs. And, you know, my daughter had special yeah, needs. And, that's right. And this year would be her 30th birthday. So wow. I keep thinking about that while I was there. But it was so much fun to hang out with those kids, play basketball with those kids, just interact with them because they were just so happy to get, you know, the balls, the jerseys, the boom box for the chilies and this school was so it's so good and so so and, and and what i mean by that is they they have special needs for cheerleaders so they have cheerleaders with special needs and the cheerleaders take care of them it's just it was just a great program that's run over there by by that school and i just i had a great time yesterday usually you know i'm an um, hour in an hour out i think it stayed with like two to three hours man because those kids are just so wonderful man Good on you, dude. Yeah. That's awesome. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah, that's what's up. Good for you, dude. So, that's great. And then so you were saying was, something about you got a news interview or something going on? You got oh, yeah. to be on the yeah, news? Today, you know. Um, you and Chris? Jamie. Matter of, Jamie Maggio. Oh, Jamie. You know, Jamie wanted to do an interview with Chris today and me because, um, you know, keeping it in the family as far as Chris going to UCLA. Even though I didn't go to UCLA, but uh, they didn't recruit me. But, uh, <laughs> um, it's you know, it's just a thing they, they want to do, you know, special moment with father sons. And I think this is going to be a – it's going to be our first one. So – and I'm happy that Jamie's doing it because, you know, the history that she and I have from back at Spectrum. So it's going to be a good day today. Good you go from a sad day to a great day. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, but, but I'll tell you what, day, though, even, even your sad day, day yeah. was pretty damn good. Mm-hmm. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it was like a great you, day. Yeah, You got yeah. to do something yeah, yeah. positive. I should say sad. What was otherwise. I should say emotional. Yeah. yeah it is emotional. Like, yeah. like yeah. my, okay, mm-hmm. so Sunday was St. Patrick's Day was my dad, would have been my dad's 70th birthday. Mm-hmm. So I had the yeah. same, you know what I mean? <laughs> like where you're like, it's not a bad day. It's just yeah. emotional. Like you, you, exactly. you start thinking about them and, and, you know, everything kind of stirs itself up and. And then you got to come to work and, you know, pretend like everything's okay. You're like, hey, everything's fine. You know, hey, look at me. I'm still an idiot. So, uh, you know, not bad days, just emotional days. 
A lot of stuff going on this week, though. A lot. Dude, a lot of stuff <laughs> going on. Uh, I made a ton of notes. I don't even know how much of this stuff we even want to get to. Do we want to hey, talk let's, about... Let's, let's, talk about, let's talk about... Huh, after the thumping they got by the Lakers and you're a Laker friend, you're going to wear a Hawks hat? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Hey man, I was I I was running some errands this morning, and this is what I had on. Okay, so therefore, it, it, you know, it is what it is. I ain't even put really two and two together, it. but I did stay up to watch that game, and it's interesting because the previous night they had the Clippers and they handled Ooh. the Clippers. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I and I'm thinking to myself, well, West Coast road trips ain't never been good for the Hawks overall. There's no way in the world they win back to back games in that same building. And sure enough, I ain't. I thought that the Clippers was gonna beat them, and they were gonna beat the Lakers. Yeah. I thought it was gonna be the other way around. Surely enough, I think the Lakers wanted some payback for how they looked here when they were in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. must um, have been. Hey, with the way the game started off with Austin Reeves getting. Oh, I got that. For <laughs> oh you. my goodness. Yeah, no, oh. I got it. Hold on. Yeah, here's here's Jalen's uh, poster on Austin Reeves. Turnover time, taken by Johnson. He's gonna go all the way and throw it down and one. Wow. What a way to start the game. First basket of the game. First points. <laughs> oh. Hey, let me let y'all know something. For all of you all who are not very familiar with one Jalen Johnson, y'all better hey. watch out. Yeah, keep your eyes open on that kid, man. That reverse he had was, whoa. I was like, dang, who is this kid? He hustles, man. He's a good player. Hey, He, he really hustles. He's a good kid. And then on the flip side of that, you say, okay, he got – he they let go of Collins <laughs> – and then that same night. And then Collins got his ass postered by Ant-Man. Here's the Ant-Man poster on Collins. And only had one shot attempt in that first half. Another turnover for Utah. Edwards gets it back. And threw it down. And one from the Raptors. Dislocated his finger. He threw that down so hard on Collins. Oh. Man, that, man, I, man, that I might be the Dats, dude. That's dunk of the year. That yeah, is the dunk of the year so far. That's like that Blake Griffin dunk that time. So, yeah. but he's just yeah. man, Ant Man. He and the thing about it, he's just not just dunks, man. He got pull up jumpers. He got this. You know, he he actually had to guard Jokic that game. You know, the next night. So, yeah, mm-hmm. dude can do a little bit of everything. And that, and to be honest, they only lost that game by three. No Rudy Gobert. No Carl no Anthony Towns, mm-hmm. and they only lost that game by three. And, and Ant Man could have tied it up because he had a wide open look for the for the tie, and he missed it. So for that game to be that close with two of their pivotal pieces out, look, let me tell y'all something. Mm-hmm. Whether it be this year, next year, or oh, whatever, yeah. Hey, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but he that, don't know what, yeah, yeah. But that's why I think you hear like we talked about a few weeks ago, where Draymond was like, "Man, I wish Ant Man would have just come out and played in the All Star game and got himself an All Star MVP just mm-hmm. to put something on the shelf because I think it's coming for that kid." And I think we've right. talked about it before. Like it's it's a bright future if he keeps playing this way. Ant Man is something special, man. You know, he he has his handles, his defense. Yeah, you know, strength. Uh, you know, he. I mean, you know, he. When you compare him, it's only one person you can really compare him to. That's Kobe and MJ. You know, it's like because that's the the the, the size. You know, the strength when it comes to like MJ and the power. Man, it's just he just if he keep developing that skill set, man, he gonna ain't nobody gonna be <laughs> in his way but himself. I'm gonna tell you this right now. At some point in time, you know, in the next couple of years or so, him him and Wimby are gonna meet at the basket, and we gonna. <laughs> and, and we're going to see that regardless of which way it go, the world may end with those two meet at the basket. Hey, women going to get ducked on, man, because yeah, it is. comes to like he's... just straight power like that. You will get hurt because yeah. he's just too damn strong, man. Yeah, he yeah. is. And when I like Wemby's game is great, but he's like skinny as a rail. Mm-hmm. You know, like I feel like he needs to put some muscle on if you want to meet a guy like that at the rim. Cause... Yeah, but he's the thing about women, though, he's really he's really good at help side blocking because he's so long yeah and I, you know and most people are afraid to challenge him even like that Kyrie is skilled easy he got blocked one time the mm-hmm. next time he said, you know what i am not going in because i'm too good i'm too skilled he's just hitting the floaters from outside and women like well damn i'm used to people going to the hole and challenge me but no nah, it's a different kind of challenge when it comes to ant-man Ooh. Mm. yeah mm. yeah uh by the way speaking of strength uh zion williamson after the tired run of fat jokes on him, including some maybe cracked on this show. Uh, 
he's he's lost some weight. He looks good. He looks strong, and the Pelicans look really good. Yeah, they got a chance to pass the Clippers. And uh, mm. but me, you know, when, when people don't say when you've been hurt that many times, I don't think he's been playing hard because he's been afraid. He's been playing at level seven, and now that he's secure with his body, he's playing at level ten. And now that weight's dropping off, and he can do things. You know, even that dunk he had the other night when he went, it was only on alley oop, but yep. you can see that his bounce is coming back. And so I just think he's comfortable now with his body. He's comfortable not being hurt because that can weigh on you mentally. Everything I do is going to cause me to get hurt. And so now I, I think he's just he's playing in shape and or getting in shape or whatever you want to say. But the dude and the, and the Pelicans are looking nice. Yeah. Yeah. And what you also got to take into consideration is, you know, I know they got Valanciunas over there in the middle, but – they're a top 10 defense without any prominent rim protector. Like when you got guys like, I see why they didn't want to give up Herb Jones. Mm-hmm. You know, you got Trey Murphy the third. You got Brandon Ingram over there. You got these lanky 6'8", 6'9", wing players who will defend. I remember watching them here a few weeks ago when they were in Atlanta. And the way that Herb Jones was defending DeJounte Murray – Mm-hmm. Oh, even in the post game presser, Dejounte brought it up. He was like, "Look, that guy Herb Jones gonna play defense. It's gonna be a dog fight each and every night. I don't care who he's guarding. He gonna make that person fight." Yeah, and that's yeah. what you gotta understand about this team. And then you got a, a leader in CJ. CJ is one of those players. Even though you know, I think when people saw him in Portland, they're like, "Oh, he's just a scorer." But I think he had to do that in Portland, you know, and, and because you had no other offense but him and Dane. On his team, you got Zion, B.I. You got so many guys on his team that can score that he can kind of take a, a back seat to those guys at times and just come out and say, okay, you need me now? Okay, I'm going to do this thing. And mm-hmm. that's what I love about C.J., man. He just – he's a filler. Whatever you need, he can fill that position. He's the vet. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, he's the guy that understands that he's on a younger team yeah. and he's the elder statesman and, you know – this is you guys' team. You guys take over. We're going to go as far as you all take us. And like you said, when, whenever I need to really step in and, and do my thing and do what people know that I can do, that's mm-hmm. cool. But a lot of this rests on the shoulder of y'all hung, young and hungry dudes. Yeah. And I think for the first time this season, we're getting to see Zion really flex the muscle. Like you said, Rob. Yeah. I feel like he's finally at a place where he feels comfortable pushing that game as far as it can go because maybe the last like two weeks he's looked exceptional. Yeah. Just everything yeah. I've seen from him the last two weeks has been like, shit, where's this been? <laughs> where's this been? I know yeah. it's been injury. I know he's been hurt, but damn, like that's the Zion everyone wanted to see when he came into the league. Yeah. I feel and like I that's where he's playing now. And he's left-handed too. You know how hard it is to stop left-handed guys because you're not used to that. Yeah. And his, his ability, his little flick around the rim you know, he, and you think of a guy who's uses a power dunking, but when he gets around the rim, if he's not up above the rim, his little quick flip with the left to get mm-hmm. to the basket is nice, man. So, but I know one thing: I'm not letting his ass go left. Cause every time you see a highlight, the dude going left, yeah. I'm sitting his ass right. Uh-uh. He's <laughs> not dunking on me with that. Power force him left. to his other hand. <laughs> uh, I do want to play you Stephen A. real quick because Stephen A. I think was probably the loudest voice on. Oh on, yeah, on the weight issue. And uh, my man Stephen A. had to kind of walk this one back a little bit this week, so he had this to say about Zion Williamson. The New Orleans Pelicans are being led by Zion Williamson, who's playing like a number one overall pick. Much props, much loves to him. We're going to see what he does as the, as the playoffs approach. They've got C.J. McCollum on there. They've got Brandon Ingram on there. They've got Valanchunas on there. They've got Herbert Jones on there. They've got size. They've got athleticism. They've got perimeter shooting. they got veteran leadership. they got a man-child in Zion Williamson who looks stealth, like he lost weight. He stayed off the burgers and the steaks. He ain't hiding food under his bed or anything like that from the team. The brother's focused. And that Zion Williamson... I got news for you. The New Orleans Pelicans could go to the finals. I'm not saying they're doing that. I'm not saying they're better than Denver. I'm saying they've been playing exceptionally well, and they have all the pieces in place to make a run. So obviously all the guys you guys just talked about, uh, Stephen A. ran those off, but do you think he's maybe overshooting a little by saying they got a shot at the finals? Uh, They're still young in the sense of the finals, but 
Why does he still have to take a shot at him, though? Because got that's what Stephen A. does. I'm like, why? Man, Stephen I'm like, A. can't even know. pay man a compliment without taking a shot. Come on. I know. I'm like, dude, you don't even know if that man had burgers and all that kind of stuff, man. I like this. Get the man his props. You know, give yeah. like you know, my man B says, get the man his flowers right now and say that he's worked his way back into being in shape and being in the position where he can be dominant on the floor. And I, I you know, let's be honest. You know, when you look at that team, you know. Zion's is a, is a drive guy. Bi is you know you know he's he's a streaky shooter. I don't think they have enough, you know, defensively. You know, Herb, he's a guy, but everybody else is kind of suspect when it comes to defense. I don't think I don't you know. Of course, you got you know, beat people with Alvarez. What was it Alvarez? What his name is? Yeah, from Georgia Tech. Yeah, yeah. But it's I don't think they have enough defense. I think they might get, depending on who they matched up with, they get to the second round, but no further than that. Okay. I don't know how to describe it when it comes to Stephen A. Um, <laughs> you know, been listening to Stephen A. for a long time. He was somebody I looked up to a lot when I was in college. When you start looking at people in the industry that you kind of wanted to be like or kind of model your career after. Uh, but as I got older, I still like Stephen A. Smith, you know, in the, in the position that he's in, for you know, the level of um, cachet that he holds, especially there at ESPN, a very prominent company. And all the success that he's had. I feel like there's a big ass butt coming here. <laughs> <laughs> Not a butt. Okay. I'll use another term. However. However. <laughs> I, I feel as though, and I'm I'm not questioning his knowledge when it comes to sports, but a lot of but a lot of him is just gimmick outlandish. And it's been that way for a while, just loud, you know, things of that nature, and that's fine. But as you heard it in that last clip, I, I I don't I question sometimes his knowledge to a degree when it comes to certain things because a lot of the things that he he talks about he's sometimes I think he's just reading off of a depth chart or reading it off of a, 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 of a statistical piece of paper and I, sometimes I don't know if he actually watches certain games I don't think he does and this is not to take a shot at him it's just some of the things that I'm is observing over the years when he's sitting there on the set with certain players, people who play, people who have a different level of knowledge. And I sometimes I just look at him as the gimmick guy. And that's cool because you got to have that. Just like on every team, you got guys who are good at what they do. Yeah. Um, it's just, I, mm, sometimes I don't know. And you still have to take a shot at the man after giving <laughs> well, him his that's props. His, but that's his gimmick. Yeah, that is the gimmick, and I'm I'm gonna defend. I'm gonna throw Stephen A. and Bale a little bit here because mm -hmm. I think you you might be being a little bit unfair in the sense that there is no way for any of us who cover the amount of sports that we cover to mm -hmm. really watch that much. I mean, like I try to watch as much as I can, and I end up spilling over highlights and box <laughs> scores and recaps and stuff just because there's just not enough time in the day to get to the, the whole thing. slate of games, like. You're right, though, but there are guys that are more connected to the game that probably watch a lot more basketball than maybe Stephen A. does, but he's also trying to watch football and keep up with the narrative on college football and bone up on March Mania and March Madness and all the other stuff that's going on that I feel like it's going to be tough for anybody to like fully invest in everything. And the people that are fully invested in everything are not on-air guys. <laughs> they're like statistics. <laughs> they're like stats guys and fantasy football guys and it's tough, man. It's it's really tough. But you're you're I, right in the sense that he loves to take the shot, and that's why he is who he is because he's not afraid to go. This is the narrative, and here's how I feel. And if I'm not taking shots, then I'm not really making a point. No, I get that. I I I understand that to a degree, and I'm not asking him to watch. It. Obviously, we know it's impossible. It's impossible, even you know, working in local markets yeah, to be keeping able to up pay with all the teams. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. It's tough. I, it's hard for me to describe. It's just one of those things where it gets annoying at times with him. At one point in time earlier, you know, maybe when I was younger, it was, you know, it was cool. You know, it was funny and everything like that. But now it gets to a point where it becomes annoying and aggravating at times. It's like, we already know what he's going to say. You already know what approach he's going to take. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I just don't feel as though there is a level of balance sometime with him nowadays. Not questioning his knowledge not questioning you know his intelligence but sometimes i do question some of the antics that do kind of come you. along with some things it gets a little 
mundane and and old. Yeah, I I I, I totally get what you're saying, and it, you know, for me, I think everybody has to have a stitch, you know, yep. and that's his. And 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 you think about it, he kind of stole it from Dick Vitale. Because Dick Vidal became known for yelling all the, oh, he's the Balsam baby. Oh, baby. You know? yeah. yeah. You know, the louder you are, the more attention people pay attention to you sometimes. And I think with him, that's how he got his way in. And plus, you know, he started out in the basketball world. And so yeah. and, and he kind of, you know, he kind of moved his way up with that. You know, he, he's, he's he, he, you know, he's good at what he do. Let's give him that. Now, he gave it a oh, do, but great. sometimes, sometimes, you know, when he gets to yelling and he gets to, you know, talking about guys and, and you know, he could have just flat out said, I'm, I'm, I apologize about Zion and then moved on. But you See, don't that was, have to that was the only, that guy. was the, that was the thing yeah. that was missing. Yeah. You know, be, be a man about it. So, you know what? I was wrong. I and, and, to, and people don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. You don't know what's going on in this man's personal life. The man might've been, you know, had this, that, and don't say he had burgers under his bed and stuff like that. That's just a low blow, man. Don't, don't put me on a pedestal then fucking chop my legs out, you know? So, <laughs> so, but it's just, man, you know, but yeah, I get it. You know, he has to have a stitch and that's his stitch. Well, every, and it seems like, you know, love it or hate it. Everybody in media, not just sports media, media has going to have their little gimmick. Yeah. And that's what makes them, you know, like not to take a shot, but look at ESPN, Pat McAfee. Yeah. What's the gimmick? He never sits down. He's got shirtless. He's you know wearing <laughs> sleeveless shirts all the time. And he's got an Aaron Rodgers exclusives. He's he's like the anti ESPN ESPN guy. Um, they've all got their little shtick. It's what makes you a media star. You know, like well, while I love inside the NBA, it wouldn't be the same if Shaq and Chuck weren't consistently taking shots at each other and making each other giggle under the table and. Racing yeah. Ernie, racing Kenny to the board. You know what I mean? Like that's just shtick that works within their show, but it's really good. Stephen A. Shtick has just always been, I'm I'm gonna get loud and I'm gonna take a few shots and people are gonna look my way for it. That, you know, and I'm not mad about the shtick. I'm oh, not no. mad. I understand everybody has it. Respect it, the it, hustle. You know, he's, <laughs> he's making he's making it work. The I, I think the difference is like when you mentioned, you know, NBA on TNT. It, it's a completely different like the, it, it's a much more natural i feel type of thing oh sure so where it doesn't it doesn't come off as gimmicky like i don't look at now sometimes the big fella we know which direction he's going to take whenever charles says something about basketball and things. We, oh, you know you don't have you don't have yeah. g14 classification because you don't have any rent we know that okay, okay whoop de whoop de whoop but when it comes to that total dynamic I don't feel I don't feel like that's gimmicky. It's natural. The way that they come off, it's just that's why they're the best show on TV. But you know, when you talk about gimmicky, you, you have this on the show sheet. That damn mag dog can't get oh, So no I was gonna go right into that. Him. So that's since we're in the first take universe. <laughs> look, Mad Dog Chris Russo has been Mad Dog for Mike and the Mad Dog on WFAN for like 40 years. Okay. Mm. When when Mike and the Mad Dog went away from WFAN, Mike Francesa continued to be a very big success in New York, has his own platform, all that stuff. Russo, I think, had a hard time finding his lane for a while. In the last few years, they've put him on first take. And since they've done that, I feel like he's leaned in to the Stephen A-ish shtick as much as possible. What's the most outlandish thing that I could say that's going to get eyes on me? And I'm going to say it really loudly, which is... Kind of frustrating. He did have this one this week. Uh, Jokic might be, at the end of the day, the greatest center in NBA history. He's that good. He's better than Shaq. I'll tell you right now, he's better than Shaq. Man, you know, what's the other guy that um, Stephen A. left? Oh, Skip Bayless. It's like he combined Skip and Stephen together to become him. You know, Skip say some crazy off-the-wall shit, and... Stephen A just says it, says it loud, and, and they putting it together, and this is what they're doing. And like for him to say that Jokic, I don't think Jokic is better at than Shaq is maybe passing and shooting threes. And I don't even know what passing because Shaq was a hell of a pass. I might say shooting threes, but ain't no no nah, he's a better in, passer than Big Fella. Ain't no fucking way in the world that if you take Jokic who's in his prime right now, Shaq is in his prime, and you going down the stretch, there's no fucking way you take Jokic. No, no, don't get me wrong now. Yoke is a hell of a player. Oh, yeah. But he ain't no Shaq. You know, Shaq, and, and think about it. Shaq is, can just dominate a game by himself. Yokish can too. But the way Shaq can foul everybody out, 
<laughs> yeah. Come on, man. You know, I know. And it's, it's just, I think they looking at what he can, you know, as far as shooting and MVPs and stuff like that. But no, Shaq was a different. Well, type you're of also beast. talking about Jokic, who is a big physical guy in a game today that is not physical. I mean, <laughs> Shaq is. was the most dominant physical player on a game with hand checking and, <laughs> and catching forearms and pushing people <laughs> out and fights and yeah. malice at the palace. And Shaq was still the most dominant guy on the floor. To say you're the yeah. most dominant guy in the NBA today is like, you know, I'm the biggest kid on the playground. It's not even a comparison. And the way you have to, it's the way you have to account for them too. Like every coach knew we got to, like Shaq changed the rules. Oh yeah. <laughs> like they're like hack a Shaq, like <laughs> mm-hmm. pop hack a Shaq. You know, you got, hey, put him on it. Cause if we don't put him on the line, He is going to destroy us. He changed the rules, and I'm not taking anything away from from the Joker. He is absolutely dynamic. He He is dynamic now. He will be in the Hall of Fame, no doubt about it. But it's it's, it's different. Like It's the reason why we call Shaq the most dominant force in NBA history. When Jokic has said it done, we won't call him that. We'll call him a hell of a player, and he's a champion and a Hall of Famer. But Shaq will always be the most dominant force this game has ever seen. Ever. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, yeah, for a guy who played with him, Rob. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, firsthand, you watched it. We watched it on. Yeah, you know, and I think if people go back and you watch some Shaq clips, you think about the guys that had to guard Shaq. You, you, if you thought you was going to win a title, you found a player that was three hundred plus pounds just to go in. You know, they they, went, they might not been that good, but it's just to give you six fouls to put Shaq on the free throw line. Yeah. And that's what you got to understand. It's nobody going out and saying, oh, we need to find someone to guard Jokic or we need someone, you know, to deal with Jokic. No, but Shaq, you put players on your team. There's a lot of guys got two or three years in the league just because there was big bodies they had to, you know, they could force. Like you think about, uh, you think about the Utahs, you think about the Denvers, you take, you think about, you know, the Portlands, you know, and all these people, they set their teams up. Indiana, you know, they in the East, they set their team up. Case and just in case we meet the Lakers, we had three bigs that could put Hack a Shack, yeah. and that's what you got to understand. Teams set their teams up because if we have to face that big motherfucker in the middle, <laughs> we need someone to beat the hell out of him. And we're not gonna talk about all the times people grab him and the fouls he didn't get called because yeah. the refs be like, "Well, he's big enough to withstand that." But you know, it's it's just amazing. Yeah, I I, I I think uh Mad Dog's talking out of his ass on that one. Oh look, I don't not that he just... isn't always, but you know, more, <laughs> maybe more so than usual. Yeah. Can we hit the uh the Kyrie shot from the other night real quick? The hook to win the Dude. game. Dude. Uh I mean, I'm gonna play it real quick and then we'll play some of the reaction to it. Kleba looking in for Irving. Irving for the win! That was an absurd little left-handed, what was that? It was a hook, really. Can't even say it was a floater. It was just like a straight hook to win the game. It's creative. <laughs> uh, it was. We got we got this one. Uh, the most skilled player in the history of basketball from Jay Williams. Uh, piggybacking on that, Dame said he's the most skilled player ever. And then we got Magic Johnson weighing in. I jumped off my couch screaming after Kyrie's game-winning shot from behind the free-throw line for the Mavericks over the reigning champs' nuggets. It's one of the greatest, if not the greatest, left-handed game-winning shot I've ever seen. I mean, dude, it was it was a wild shot. It was like a circus shot. The greatest left-handed game-winner that Magic Johnson's ever seen is pretty damn high praise. Hey, he just he just want to make sure. Hey, if mine was right handed, mine was just as good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess but, so. He kind of qualified. I, I, you, it, know, yeah. you know, we always talk about Kyrie and how great he is as a basketball player, and the things he can do in the court is phenomenal. You know, it's just it, you know, his skill set is beyond most, and his ability to play the game, and from you know, shooting, handles, defense, mm. steals, is the dude. The dude can flat out play, man. But I think. This Kyrie that we're kind of starting to see emerge a little bit in Dallas. This feels like Cavs Kyrie to me. This feels like the Kyrie Irving we've been missing for like the last four years. 
Like I haven't. <clears throat> he's always been great, but just the the way he's played with Luca, without Luca, um, the the shots he's hit, the moments he's had, the the way he's just helping Dallas move forward. This to me has the the harkens back to the Kyrie that everybody just continued to throw flowers at when he was in Cleveland. And yeah. obviously he had a lot of off the court issues. He missed some seasons. We had the immunization bullshit and all that other stuff. So I think for me it's just really nice and cool and fun and refreshing to see people not just talk well of Kyrie Irving, but for him to show out the way he's shown out this this last season specifically. Yeah, we've always looked. Despite whatever you feel as though Kyrie represents, you know, whatever he stands for, whatever he speaks out about, the man has always known how to hoop. He's always been looked at as one of the most skilled players this game has ever seen. And so, you know, he he we you talked about the handles thing. You know, you've heard guys like AI and everybody else talk about him. Like he, you know, Jamal Crawford, like yeah. They've praised his ability to be able to handle the basketball. And it's like watching, it's like poetry in motion. It's like smooth R&B watching him handle the rock. <laughs> and so seeing him do these things, it's Kyrie Irving. Very skilled. One of the most skilled that this game has ever seen, that this game will ever see. Ain't nobody surprised about that. Oh, no, not at all. It's just nice to see it. It's nice. Oh, to, yeah. It's, and you know what? I have, I have heard next to nothing about Kyrie Irving in the last, I don't know, eight, nine months compared to the previous four years where he was like every other off-court story from the NBA was a Kyrie <laughs> Irving story. And yeah. it, it's been refreshing that he just goes out, he plays his ass off, he's getting the respect he deserves, he's getting to show off how good he really is without all the noise, without all the other noise. It's just been nice. Yeah, it's been great. It's just been nice. Um, let me get we got a couple, a couple more things to get to. Then we're gonna do big shot, and we're gonna play a round of rapid fire. Uh, true or false? Demar Derozan is a Hall of Famer. He reached true. number thirty three on the all time points list this week, surpassing the likes of Dwayne Wade, Elgin Baylor, Clyde Drexler, CP three, Gary Payton, Larry Bird, and many others. Um, is he a Hall of Famer, Demar Derozan? False. Uh, I think he is. I think it's false. I think he's a Hall of Famer. I think he is a hell of a player. Right. Yeah. Who's had a hell of a career. I don't know that he has done enough. I know he's a – is he? No, he he's not a champion because he was traded. He was traded, yeah. So – no, Yeah, I don't think he's won. It, it's tough. Like, he doesn't have – he doesn't even have an MVP to his name. <laughs> You know, it, it's tough. It's he's he's a hell of a, he is a hell of a player, very skilled player. I just don't think he's done enough, enough to be considered a Hall of Famer. I just don't. Okay. Uh, I'm a so when I'm, I'm people are gonna probably get mad at me for what I'm about to say, but I'm gonna say when you talk about Demar Derozan, right? Mm -hmm. You talk about a guy who's put up all these points, not shooting threes. You know, he started shooting threes with the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. He's able to get buckets. You know, he's been a All Star multiple years. And you can't like you know six time, you, yeah. I'm gonna ask you like, is, did Charles Barkley win a championship? I know he's the MVP. Did Trace McGrady win a championship? Did 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 uh, Carl Malone? Did oh, Patrick Ewing? Patrick I mean, Ewing. Yeah, there's you there's know, lots of guys you know, where the championship. There's lots of guys. Go. I know the thing yeah. that probably separates yeah. those guys is they won MVPs. But you know, come on, now, Charles. Did Charles should have won MVP? No, MJ should have won. To, to Carl Malone should have won. No, MJ should have won. You know, that, that, so. DeMar DeRozan is such a hell of a player, but people are going to judge him because he's never won anything. Let me, uh, let's put, let's go, you know, my boy, Mitch Richmond and DeMar DeRozan are the same freaking players. And Mitch is in the Hall of Fame. So what did Mitch do that DeMar didn't do? Can I, can I, can yeah. I throw, let me, let me, let me kind of, I do think sometimes, and I could be completely wrong about this, but this is just my wheel spinning. I think sometimes we, because we can look at every sporting Hall of Fame and find this. I think it all depends on when you go in as well. Yeah. Like, as time goes on, 
and certain numbers become, and I'm not saying that it's necessarily fair because I believe that some dudes are a victim of this and they should be in. But as time goes on and the numbers become more grand, it becomes a lot harder for guys who really are Hall of Fame material to get in. Like you're looking at the NFL with guys like Reggie Wayne, Torrey Holt, you know, guys like that who put up monster numbers, but you don't know if they're going to get in on the second ballot, third ballot. You know, a lot of guys have to wait their turn who you think are supposed to be getting in automatically. I'm just not, I don't know because of how when DeMar DeRozan in the era that he's in, when you got so many guys putting up so many numbers that it's enough to get him in, not because he's not that type of player, but he's just a victim of when he's playing. I get what you're saying. Yeah, Yeah. because, you know, it took took Bernard King forever to get in. Yeah. Michael Cooper, who's two-time defensive player of the year in the NBA, ain't in. So, you know, it, it has a lot to do with who's voting to. Mm-hmm. Because the voters get you in or don't get you in because, you know, there there's some voters in there that are assholes and there's some voters that are more lenient. And so I think for me, DeMar gets my vote if I had a vote because his, the impact that he's had on the game and the way he's able to play defense, you know, he just, he, he's been stuck. He's been stuck in Toronto. He got shipped to San Antonio. Now he's stuck at the Bulls, and nobody can only. I, I, in an I guarantee you, if you ask everybody who ever played the game in the NBA, not those assholes are in the Hall of Fame that are you know don't really know the game, they yeah. just watch the game. They would say Demar Derozan isn't is a Hall of Famer for the for the what he's brought to the game and what he's able to accomplish within the game. To your point about Mitch Richmond, they're both six time All Stars. They're both three time second team All NBA second teamers. The only difference is Mitch has an All Star MVP and an NBA championship. Mm-hmm. Those, it's really the only glaring difference <laughs> See, between yeah. the two of them. Um, yeah. Which is not to say Demar may never get that opportunity to win a title, yeah. but if he does, you're right. If you look at and again, we're, you everything you guys just said. You're talking different eras when you go yeah. in, all that stuff. But if you put the two of them next to each other, you're right, Rob. They are comparably <laughs> almost exactly the same player, same position um, too, same position. <laughs> Same yeah. accolades, same achievements. <laughs> I think the only thing maybe that gives Mitch a little upper hand is he did a lot of it in Sacramento. <laughs> Which is like, hey, hey man. That's like you Toronto. That man. Oh, I guess it's true. Yeah, that's all right. You got a point. You got a point. And right when you're on the cusp of winning the championship, what they do? Send you away. Send you ass away. <laughs> yeah, you got a point. You got a point. Um, all right, a couple more quick things, and we're going to get to a big shot in our game. Um, how, many, uh, how many brackets do you usually do for March Madness? Do you do one? Traditionally, two. or do you do like multiples or what? I just do two. I do two with some friends. We've been doing it for years, and I just okay. set mine in. And so, I mean, yeah, I usually do. Up. I usually do one. Yeah, I'll just do one for the station thing uh, that Harp and I have for the for the station we work at in Atlanta. But aside Who you got from winning that, it? Are, uh, you, are, you, or are you superstitious? You want to put it out there? I I I I don't know if I finished my bracket yet. I think I started <laughs> it yesterday and I forgot to finish it. Uh, I think uh, I did the first and second rounds, but. Um, you you uh, you got your uh Bama's in there, yeah. You got Bama in but there. You have to you have to go back. No, I'm Auburn so and, Auburn and I, Bama both a four seed. Yeah, I I finished my bracket and then I realized that that dude from Kansas is not playing. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. see, it, <laughs> so it's it's now so you, hard, now it, and it's up. it's so hard to to do all the dialing in on who's playing and who isn't, who's hurt, and what's on, and and, it's, and and you know what? It's a crapshoot anyway. Yeah, it's and my final four, crap. I have Auburn. Oh, Arizona, okay, Tennessee, okay, and Marquette. Wow, yeah, okay. I so went, none I of them. Outside, I went outside the box. Yeah, none I of your top no, seeds I, there. Yeah. I, Purdue to me, they always get beat by someone. North Carolina, they don't play hard enough for me. And UConn, Houston, Houston's number, Houston. you know, number one. They're missing. They 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 forcing the freshman that was rebounding. He's out, and they look so bad the other day against Iowa State. And then who's the other number one? Uh, UConn. Uh, UConn. 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 I think you, UConn, you know, they, they, I won. Everybody's going to put UConn to win it all. I feel like, so I feel like I just had to go outside the box in order to win. Okay. <laughs> I like it. I mean, look, it doesn't matter. Nobody ever gets mm-hmm. it right. It's so, it's yeah. so often yeah, how often you get any of, like, if you have one, maybe two out of the final four, it's like, that's a huge yeah. win. Yeah. Uh, I got to give props to my FAU uh, Owls. They're there with an eight seed mm-hmm. again this year. So they'll get Northwestern in the opening round. 
Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll FAU as far as I could take them. I don't know if they're gonna get as far as they did last year. Uh, you had a huge upset to get them there, but uh, man, I'll take it. Uh, I'll ride they're FAU good, for the while. They're a good team, man. They're good. Dusty's got them boys it, playing. I got them going to the Sweet Sixteen. I got them going to the Sweet Sixteen. I think I had them in the Sweet Sixteen, but I think mm-hmm. a lot of that is personal bias because uh, <laughs> it's the only thing rootable from the college that I went to that we have. It's Mets FAU basketball. Uh, we got nothing oh. else. We did have Lane Kiffin for like. 16 months. But aside from that, we have nothing, ain't got much else to hang our hat on there. Um, and then uh, Juwan, Juwan Howard, by the way, out at Michigan. Yeah. They moved on from him. Um, he won a Coach of the Year Award 2021. Uh, mm-hmm. He's been there for, what, four years? Uh, and long. they moved on to him. Yeah, they moved on from yeah. him. So we'll I think, see what, I think uh, that what Michigan it was. It was coming to me after that, that little East, when he swung on another coach. I think that put him in the hot seat. The only way he was going to keep that job, but he went to the Final Four, you know, did all those starts and yeah. you know, so he'll be back. He'll be back coaching. He'll be in. He'll be in NBA next year coaching. Yeah, he I didn't know. Um, back in college coaching, might be. I ain't do a bracket. You doing um, it all? I just didn't feel the. I didn't have the desire to do one. The last couple of seasons for men's college basketball has just kind of been like eh, to me, to where it's like I watch it. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to watch it. But to actually have the desire to fill out a bracket like I used to, it just ain't there this it, year. It's not, But that's the thing. is, There's never a, like a huge desire. It's just more like I did it to do it. it, it yeah, yeah, but I used I used to – no, what I mean by is I, I used to look forward to this time of year to me fill too. it out. Like I used to print it out. Like even when I was in college or whatever, school, or even after, I used to print it out, fill it out, and put it in like the little slip of my binder – like in the front and yeah. the little transparent. That's what I mean by desire. Mm-hmm. I've never, I, if the last couple of seasons, I just, I ain't, I've looked at it. Okay. Glanced over it. I, I I saw the selection Sunday. Okay, cool. Duke is a four C, you know, this team is this C, this team, this C. It just ain't the last couple of seasons just have not hit for me. You know, the women have been better. You know, the women have just been, oh, no, been better. And I think the, I saw yes. something this week that said the women's March Madness has outsold the men's uh, ticket-wise by like four to one or something like that. Like there's it's, it's, four it's, times as much demand for the women's It's going to always be that way. You want to know why? Because the good players stay for women. The good players leave and go pro. Yeah. You know, and as you think about the guys you want to watch – it, they're one and done, and it's like it, it's not really a it's not really a one and done guy. They're talking about the kid from USC might be one and done, and like he ain't even in an NCAA tournament. You talk about you know the, I think it's the kid from Duke that might be one and done. It's like okay, that's only you can't really talk about because everybody's one and done now, and they don't even care because then if you're not one and done, what it's like what 180 guys in the portal already, and you know and nice. the NCAA is not even over yet. And it's just, it's just, it's the turnover, and and it's it's gonna get to a point where there's no loyalty in sports. And oh, you know, the fan gonna base get gonna be, to, dude. We're yeah. we're there, man. <laughs> nil because, nil made that a reality very quickly. Yes, it's like guys are just jumping ships so bad. You know, they had a stat where they saying a a good point guard in the portal is going from two hundred to four hundred k. A good point guard, not a great point guard, a good right. point guard. It's it's no it's it's gonna be like this because most of these guys who are jumping aren't going to the next level. So they gotta rack up their money now because they're not gonna be making million dollars to play for the NBA. Yeah. Yeah. It, mm, mm. Yeah, it, it's and it's not even that. It's just it just does not have the luster that it like it you like I put it to you like this. And I may be skipping over some years. But I can remember 2019 when you had Zion, RJ Barrett, Cam Reddish. That was on that, and that's just on Duke's team. Mm-hmm. And you got so many other guys, so many, so much other star power on so many other teams. Like that, State with you know, Zion. yeah, it, it it just it it captivated you, it held you, and I'm the type of person where I love the sport anyway, but. That added a lot to it. And it's just kind of been last couple of years just kind of been all right, you know, cool. Yeah. But you know, the top to add to that, 
you think about it, like those couple of years, you knew who the number one pick was going to oh, be. Oh, right. Yeah, that's just going to say pick. the same thing. Yeah. There were always who's players one, that were in your – yeah. <laughs> who's going to be the number one pick this year? No clue. Somebody no from clue. overseas. <laughs> no clue. <laughs> yeah, really. You know, so it's like you know who number one pick going to be in the WNBA. You know that. You, you, then you know who number two and number three are going to be. Yeah. But <laughs> other than that, you don't know when, when it comes yeah. to this Good thing point. called it college basketball because – these guys are just jumping ship and they're not developing like they should because I'm mad I'm not getting a plan time. No, motherfucker, you need to develop. Yeah. <laughs> then you get some plan time. While we're on college basketball, I want to play you the audio of the week. Uh, did you see what happened during the A-10 championship game? Mm-mm. Why would you? Uh, Duquesne <laughs> versus VCU. Who gives half a crap, right? Except for Is the that fact the- that halfway through... They started dropping confetti. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all, the, that, yeah. all the damn confetti came down. So, of course, of course, who's on the call of this game? Kevin Harlan. <laughs> my goodness. Oh, my gosh. They got confetti falling right now. Confetti is falling on the floor. They're going to have to stop playing. We can't see our notes. The players can't work on this court. Confetti is everywhere. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> hit the wrong button. Well, Kevin, to be honest with you, there's not a lot of this confetti that made it on the court. Most of it fell on us. But I think they were just trying to honor you, Kevin. You deserve confetti everywhere uh, you go. Yeah, yeah right. right. <laughs> well, our officials wisely stopped it. But that that was an early ejection right there. Oh. Are they going to they have to reload it now for the winner? I mean, my goodness. it's uh... <laughs> An early ejection. It took everything he had not to say premature. <laughs> it, was, it took everything he had not to say premature ejection. And he didn't do it. Good for you, Kevin Harlan. I love Kevin Harlan so I much. love Kevin. Honestly, as far as like top announcers go, any anytime something crazy happens, the first thing I think is I really hope Kevin Harlan called this. I hope there's a Kevin Harlan call of this somewhere. Uh, he's just great, man. And then uh, I will do the jersey swap of the year. Thank oh, you to yeah. the Orlando Ma- Orlando Magic for posting this jersey. <laughs> wow. uh, man. Grady Dick and Anthony Black uh, <laughs> c- conspired, by the way, very clearly <laughs> after the game was over to do a jersey swap. Got a photographer, brought him over, held up their jerseys, black dick. <laughs> wow. Hey, man. Wow. I, I can't tell you how I was probably in tears laughing at this for oh, a good 10 minutes. Dude, and the magic put it up everywhere and then had to take it down and was like, oh, that's great. <laughs> and, then, and then they started adding players at the beginning, yeah. at the oh, end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody said, um... Somebody said uh, Jalen Sugg should have got in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sugg's flag dick. I like that. That's good. That's really good. Immediately a Kardashian shows up for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, that's really boy, they funny. knew. I, I saw the, uh, you know, they had a little commentary before on the floor. And then, you know you just reading everybody's lips. Oh yeah, they clearly played. You, you knew. Oh, they yeah, clearly they, they played knew. it because they're talking. They start giggling, and I, I remember. I think it was Grady runs over and he grabs the cameraman and drags him over, and he's like, "Get over here! Come here! Come here! Come here! Come here! Come here!" And they're like, "What the hell's going on?" They're like, "We're gonna do a jersey swap." So they. I'm gonna tell you this. Hundred <laughs> percent. I'm gonna tell you this right now. The NBA may stop. Uh, Grady from swapping jerseys <laughs> ever again because I ain't no way in the world <laughs> because you're going to end up it's easy to put the oh, wrong name in front of in dick. front of it or behind <laughs> it and it, it ain't goes it ain't it's not it yeah, ain't going to work we all know you don't want to be in front of or behind dick so that <laughs> there you go <laughs> oh goodness we are children that's funny um, all right, well, let's do uh, let's do a cool Big Shot of the Week, and then we'll play Rapid Fire, wrap this thing up. Big Shot of the Week, um, and I know this happens a lot, so I, this isn't like any kind of crazy special circumstance, but I thought it was a really cool story. Uh, Eagles quarterback Jalen Hurts is going to get Big Shot of the Week. Um, he had a, uh, there was a, there was a kid that was killed in Texas earlier this month, high school football player, uh, 18-year-old yeah, Jarvon Coles. Uh, he was at a party. In Houston, there were shots fired into a house. Unfortunately, he was struck and he was killed. But uh, Jalen Hurts went to one of the rival high schools uh, in that neck of the woods, North Shore. 
Uh, so he had heard about it, and then he just immediately stepped up and paid for all the funeral expenses and everything for this kid, just because this was a, it was a hometown thing. You know, kind of yeah. it kind of caught Jalen in the fields because it happened in his hometown at a rival school. So uh, just, I know that happens a lot, and I know there's tons of athletes who do this kind of thing. I mean, I know Shaquille's done it for a bunch of people as well. But uh, just big shot of the week to Jalen Hurts because, you know, that family is, I can't imagine uh, the pain that they're going through having to deal with this right now. So for him to just step up and do that, I thought that was dope. So big shot. Yeah, that's that's, that's very dope, man. Big ups to Jalen because there's so many times when you have those funerals, you ain't ain't thinking straight. No. And and that's one of the burdens you can take off that family, man. So thank you, Jalen, for doing that because, you know, Funerals can get crazy. They can get expensive. They get very and expensive. This is this is a way to you know leave a little uh, just a smidgen of the burden off that family who's you know yeah. who's lost a, a loved one. Yeah, just yeah, a big shot. Take care of home, man. Yeah, take yeah. care of home. And it was a hometown story yeah. for him, so I thought that was dope. So just good job by him. Uh, all right, let's play a little bit of rapid fire. Uh, I had a couple Uh-oh. people ask, uh, you haven't paid that in a while, so we'll bring it back. Rapid fire. <laughs> uh, I, you know the drill. I give you guys each 60 seconds, and I just hammer you with, oh, no. with pop culture questions until uh, we'll see how you do. Uh, Robert Ori. Yes, you sir. Want, you want to go first, or you want to defer? No, I want to defer today. Oh, you're going to defer. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Beat all Grant and Harper gets to go first. Because I like to put the pr- pressure on Harper. You like to put the so... pressure on Harp. All right, well, uh, we'll see if it works out for you. Harp Dog, you ready to go? <laughs> Nope. Okay. <laughs> the picture of confidence. All right. Uh, I'm going to put 60 seconds up on the clock here. Here we go. At the end of the 1933 film, King Kong climbs to the top of what New York City landmark? Oh, Empire State Building. Correct. What type of vision does Superman use to see through solid objects? Uh, X-ray vision? Correct. In 1992, Bill Clinton made headlines by going on the Arsenio Hall show and playing his what? Saxophone. Correct. What toy brand originally created its 18-inch girl dolls as a way to teach children about U.S. history? Barbie? No, American Girl Doll. I don't Uh, know about that. Gumby or Pokey, which is a slang term for jail? Pokey. Correct. Lady Gaga and S'mores are limited edition varieties of what Nabisco sandwich cookie? Oreo. Correct. What L word is the Hawaiian necklace commonly made of flowers like orchids and jasmine? A luau. That's a lay. I mean, a lay, lay. I knew it was the other way. Yeah, you dang. said luau, though. All right, I mean, so. the luau is a, is a party. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, uh, One, dang. two, three. The question was too easy three, for me. Three, oh. four, five. Hey, you got five, though. Damn, hey, that's, that's you strong. Didn't, you didn't think I was going to know that Bill Clinton one, did you? Uh, I know. <laughs> Everybody knows Bill Clinton made the saxophone. Come on, now. <laughs> yeah, but I when, thought, I, when hey. he was in, yeah, but he was in office, I was two. Hey, I thought you yeah, know what, it, what what yeah. object that Bill Clinton was accused of using. Oh, come on now. <laughs> come on now. Why you got why you gotta bring up the cigar? <laughs> why you gotta do that? <laughs> all the things, man. I think a man's a oh, president. Uh, all right, let's see, Rob. You gotta beat five. Let's put up sixty seconds. Here we go. General Mills or Colonel Mustard? Which character is a board game in the in the game clue? Colonel Mustard. Correct. Uh, in what playful language would my name be pronounced Abre Enters J? Pig Latin. Correct. According to the popular saying, someone who's making a mistake is barking up the wrong what? Tree. Correct. An umpire might invoke the infield fly rule in what professional sport? Baseball. Correct. According to Greek mythology, everything King Midas touched turned into what? Gold. Correct. According to a classic song by Bobby Pickett, what spooky dance was a graveyard smash? Monster Mash. Correct. If I use a 20% off coupon on a $20 item, how much money will I save? A dollar. Four bucks. Uh, <laughs> Rebel the Floor and Riri are perfumes created by what R&B superstar? Riri. Rihanna. Yeah, okay, correct. <laughs> uh, what 90s pop... Oh. I think he got more than five. I think he did. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six... Six. Seven. Seven. Dang. Seven five. Rob wins. They did the mess. They, they did, did the, the monster mess. The monster mess. All right, Rob. Well, it was you, a graveyard smash. You get, to, mess. you get to go first now in round two. Uh, a okay. win will close this thing out. Uh, <laughs> a loss will push it to three. Uh, so let's see what you got. Robert Ory, 60 seconds on the clock. 
Here we go. What 90s pop group had such memorable lyrics as, I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want? Spice Girls. Correct. What Z word drives out onto the ice between periods during an ice hockey game? Zimbabwe. No, oh, Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. Uh-huh. Zimbabwe. 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 <laughs> oh, Zamboni, Zamboni. That's something. Uh, in the 1940s, <laughs> Chuck Yeager made headlines as the first person to travel faster than the speed of what? Sound? Correct. IPO or IPA, what process makes your private business public? IPO. What does IPO stand for? <laughs> Improbable. I probably own you oh no uh, initial wow. public initial public offering uh debuting in 1977 what musical features the songs tomorrow and it's the hard knock life annie correct by the end of the falcon and the winter soldier anthony mackie becomes what superhero he got it at the buzzer at he the buzzer it. all right let's see how many did he rack up here he got uh one we're not Six counting problems. Zimbabwe. I, uh, I, I, I couldn't think of it. I had Zimboni, Zim something. I knew it was Four. Uh, that would be five. Five okay. with the fifth one at the buzzer. All right, but you got five in the last round, man. Yeah, I, but these questions be different, though. I never, I never knew what IPO stand for. I just knew it was offering Initial something. Initial public offering. This man said, I probably I own probably you. Own you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, here we go, B. Redemption is on the clock. Let's go. What sport are you playing if you're trying to keep your 12-pound Brunswick ball out of the gutter? Cricket? Bowling. Bowling. Oh, uh, no, I'm tripping! What, what state office did you gain if you just won a gubernatorial election? A gubernatorial? I don't know. Governor. Uh, with 100 million combined Instagram followers, models Bella and Gigi are sisters with what last name? Bella and Gigi. Oh, bro. This is a terrible round. I don't know. Haddad. The Haddad. Uh, what social media app bills itself as the fastest way to share the moment? Twitter? Snapchat. How many how many total wheels are there on two tricycles and a bicycle? <laughs> two tricycles. And a bicycle. And no, he can't even know. And you're wrong. You're wrong holding up a ten. Two tricycles Bro, and a bicycle is eight bicycle, wheels. Eight wheels, Eight yeah. wheels. And you're still nah, this is bad. Two ah, tricycles no, no. and a That's bicycle. Two tricycles, three That's and three, and a bicycle. How the heck am I supposed to know to two, combine? Two. Oh, a bicycle. I said two a. bicycles. Uh, oh, I thought they said two bicycles. How the heck am I supposed to know to combine? I don't know them. You don't know Bella and Gigi Haddad? Mm-mm. Wow. Okay. Who are they? Okay. Are they WWE wrestlers? Uh, no, they're like uh, they're rich social media girls. They they're all over like the the Instagrams and stuff. And I don't have Snapchat no more, so that's why I missed that one. Okay, but you didn't get bowling, bro. It I didn't get. Your, I, I don't know your what twelve I was pound ball out of the gutter, and then a well, all, all of them, all the balls ain't twelve pounds. <laughs> well, how that's the excuse. <laughs> Not all the balls. <laughs> <laughs> 